Hi, Scott. How are you doing today? Great, Gilbert. Thank you. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me back. Sure. Just maybe uh, just to refresh some of the memories of the audience, can you briefly tell us about the uh, overview of Evolutionomics? Uh, Sure. So I'm Scott Powell. I'm head of investor relations for Volition RX Limited, and I'm the chief investment officer for Volition America Incorporated. Volition is a publicly traded company listed on the NYSE American ticker symbol VNRX, and we are a diagnostics company developing blood tests to screen for different cancers and non-cancers in both humans and in animals. So let's touch base on some of the news or recent developments happening with your story there. In May, your company announced that you study show plasma nucleus on concentration can be useful in uh, canine cancer uh, treatment monitoring. Maybe you can elaborate a bit about what this means. Sure. We achieved some really important results with our clinical study at Texas A&M University. Uh, primarily showing efficacy in identifying a number of uh, systemic cancers, notably hemangiosarcoma and lymphoma in canines. And so our test is being deployed as a screen on the asymptomatic side to screen for cancer in, in canines. And the advantage here is that currently canines do not get screened asymptomatically for cancer. Most canines get aged, get sick, and then go to the veterinarian for diagnosis. And unfortunately, if the diagnosis is confirmed to be cancer, unfortunately, it's invariably late stage. So the advantage here is by deploying a low-cost, accurate, easy-to-use blood test from a company like Volition and through our licensing partners, uh, canine owners will be able to get their canines screened asymptomatically, thereby catching a lot of these cancers while they're still earlier stage and still treatable. Oh, it can be quite promising indeed. So uh, I saw some of your uh, news this year too. You raised some uh, capital, significant capital to, throughout the year. Can you tell us about uh, what's the total amount and then sh uh, share some names of who other investors maybe? Sure. We've, we've had an active year with raising capital for the company. Most recently, uh, over the summer, we raised a little over $19 million in gross proceeds with uh, Freedom Capital Markets, an investment bank uh, with their U.S. operations based um, at 40 Wall Street in New York City. And it was largely a, a retail round, mostly their European investors. It was a small discount, uh, no warrants, and brought in a significant amount of capital to Volition this, this uh, past summer. And we aim to deploy those proceeds through uh, marketing and, and sales efforts to really build awareness of our blood test to screen for cancer in canines, to hire additional scientific staff and support staff to move clinical studies forward, and um, also to move some of our uh, human health uh, studies in oncology and non-oncology based disease states forward. You also announced uh, Q2 financials uh, and business update. Uh, any important things you want to share with us on that? The most important developments from our Q2 call and, and also in terms of 2023 milestones and 2024 milestones are really the transition of Volition from a clinical stage company into a commercial stage company. That's largely being done through our veterinary product, our blood test to screen for cancer in canines. We've signed at least six licensing deals and two major ones with the Heska Corporation in uh, March of 2022 and with IDEX Corp um, earlier this year. Those are licensing arrangements or supply and distribution arrangements where uh, these companies, among others, will be selling our blood test for canines through to their um, sales force through to the veterinary community and ultimately to canine owners. So it's an important year and next year we view as very important as we hope to continue our ramp and sales um, of our uh, of our veterinary blood test. And then next year, uh, we're hopeful that we can make significant progress with our sepsis, um, particularly our sepsis blood test, um, 
which is the uh, NETS program that we've been developing and for which we've received a CE mark in Europe. So uh, hopefully with um, with some positive clinical data, um, hopefully we'll have some positive clinical data from, uh, from sepsis in Europe. We'll hopefully be able to commence sales uh, ideally next year as well. So have two sources of, of revenue as really uh, continue the transition into a, a commercial stage company. So in terms of the market expansion, many uh, special uh, planning, near-term planning in terms of, uh, you know, change the targets in terms of a global reach targets? We've really been expanding our uh, scientific teams. We've added a number of additional scientists and support staff in our uh, Southern California office just outside of San Diego. We've been adding additional team members, uh, quite a few actually, to our Belgian facilities where we have our research and development lab, and also a manufacturing facility. So we are expanding the team geographically and globally, and we are uh, selling our veterinary blood test uh, for canines here in the United States. Hopefully we can start to uh, achieve sales globally from some of our licensing partners for that canine blood test. Hopefully we'll be able to launch sales of our um, blood test for particularly for sepsis patients and for netosis in Europe next year. So we really are expanding both uh, geographically in terms of our team and geographically in terms of our anticipated sales for um, a number of our different products. So in some way, I also noticed your share price recently is uh, becoming uh, lower than before, many reasons why, or what, is that a good undervalued situation right now? And why should investors uh, consider investing in pollution Alex, right now? It's a good question and a fair question. Um, I I guess the easy answer is to to blame the macro environment for um, our, our lower than um, expected share price. I think it's been a tough macro environment overall given some of the global pressures that we faced, given inflation situation and kind of the unwinding of, um, you know, the Fed's injection of a large, large amount of capital into the uh, into the economy. So I think there are some, and obviously some geopolitical factors at play in Eastern Europe. So I think that has has weighed down on our share price. It is not a, a robust IPO or secondary market here in the US. So the capital markets are a bit weaker than we're used to. I think that has played into some share price weakness as well. I have to say though that, um, you know, in terms, I've been with the company a long time and in terms of where we're at in terms of this transition period from uh, clinical to commercial stage is very, very exciting for us. We do anticipate generating meaningful revenue growth and ideally earnings growth um, over the next several years through sales of our veterinary product in the U.S. and internationally, sales of our NETS product as well. So I think it's a very um, important and interesting time for investors to be looking at our company, given this um, important transition from clinical to commercial stage and from um, you know not really not generating significant revenue to hopefully generating very substantial revenue and hopefully delivering earnings for our shareholders over the coming years. So thank you for your time here with us, uh, Scott, in sharing your uh, company's latest update with us. Thank you, Gilbert. Really appreciate the time today. Thank you for having me back on. And thanks for allowing me to talk about the Volition RX Limited story, VNRX on the NYSE American. Yeah, I'll talk to you soon again. Thank you.